<laughs> hey, hey, how you doing, hey. YouTube? <laughs> uh, we're back. YouTubers. What is it? Kempo for what? Beginners. Less than what? Twelve. Less than twelve. All right, welcome back. I told you we were going to be back. We just took a little break from these videos for a little bit. So Kempo for Beginners, less than twelve. We're glad to have you here. And uh, we're going to do a quick disclaimer here. Training the martial arts is a dangerous act. It's a fun thing to do, but it also could be dangerous. You could have possibilities of hurting yourself. Just training. You don't have to be hitting nothing. One of the guys threw a kick one time like this, twisted his ankle. He broke or sprained his ankle real bad. So anything can happen when you're doing this stuff. So you got to assume the responsibility of injury. Assume the risk of something happening to yourself, or if you're training with a partner, as right. I kick. You know, Paul here, he was going to the wall. What if he went a little farther and went through the window over here? <laughs> what if, you know, things can happen. So you do assume the responsibility when you're training these videos. All right, let's move on here to, I want to start short one cut, or short two cut. I'm sorry, we, we, we completed a short one, didn't we? So yeah. let's go to short two kata. It's a uh, pretty popular couple kata. It's in the Parker system. It's in the Tracy system. But short two kata was made up by Ed Parker, and we continue the teaching of that right now. And so, I'm learning with you because I've never ever done this kata ever in my life. Yeah, so he's I never no done idea. short two, so I'm gonna fumble. Be easy on, <laughs> be easy on Paul, guys. Yeah, we'll when you leave comments out there. Be easy on Paul. That's all right, I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> you can bash me all you want. It I, doesn't bother me. I won't, it won't bother me. I don't cry. Because you know what? We're still going to do the videos regardless. Right? Yes, yes. So here we go. Let's do a short two kata. We're going to do part one. And then I'm going to show you the whole kata real quick as a brief overview of it. All right, so let's move this way a little bit. We're going to be moving forward on this, everyone. So we're going to start with just a normal bow like this. Hands, fists, feet together. And we're going to bow forward. Okay, hands aside. We're going to move forward. Right foot. Step into... You're not going to be right on 12 o'clock, you're going to be just off a little bit. So about 12.15, you're going to do Chinese sword. Block in, chop. For the kata version, we're going to keep the hand down here. Technique, I want to keep the hand up here. But just for the sake of kata. Alright, so here we go. We're going to bow. So you can start from a horse even. Hands, bow, ribs up on the ribs here. The hands are going to be together. Closer together. All right, move forward, step, block, chop. Bring it down here as you step up, block, chop. So that's part one. It's the Chinese sword, throw right punch. This is what I like about the Kempo forms, is we do a lot of our self-defense techniques. Short one didn't really have it, it was just blocks. Well, now we get to throw some strikes. But here's one of the techniques that you guys have trained on. Short one has what? Chinese sword. Chinese sword. All right, let's do it one more time, and then I'm going to show you it. So start here, hands, feet, bow. Okay, step forward, block, chop. Step forward, left, block, chop. Good. Okay, I'm going to show you the form real fast here. This is what you guys have in store. Now, when you're bowing too, you doesn't have to just be this. I'm going to show you the fancy bow. Open hand. This. I step forward, step out, put it together, come back to here. Here we go. Block, chop. There's your short two. You guys are going to learn this in five lessons. So just take your time with it. It'll take me eight, but <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fine. All right, here we go. Elbow poke. You guys learned the elbow slam last time. This time we're going to do the elbow poke. We're just taking it from neutral position like this. Once you lift up here, we're going to go into a soft bow stance right now. We're going to come down. There's a couple different directions you could do this. But right now we're coming down. So here we go. Pick up the arm, come in like this, drop it down. Let's do the other side. Pick it up, come in, drop it down. You hit with the back of your elbow here towards the tip. 
If you hit back here too much of this part of your elbow, guess what you're going to do? Your arm is going to go numb. You're going to hit the nerve. You hit it with the tip of the elbow right here as you're coming down. All right, let's go again. Pick it up, drop it down. Again, up and down. You can also go like this behind you. Just like when we throw in our punches here and here, that could be just a punch here, it could be an elbow back. I can elbow the head with it, I can elbow the body with it. So there's a couple ways, let's do it this way. Start up here, bring the hand out like a punch, drop it back, or you can just lift your hand up and drop it back. You get some power from here though, but yeah, drop it and there's your elbow. You can do both sides. And then there's another one, is where you're going to come across. This is a cool way too, is throw a punch at me please. I can block this, I can block in here, why I'm here, or he's pushing his hand out, break, elbow. You know, there's a couple different ways you could use this. That was just an example, I'm not teaching that technique right now on any of those. But yeah, come across. So let's start from a horse stance. Yeah, let's go over a little bit. There you go. Dropping the horse, pick your hand up, and come across. So you can go high, you can go in the rib area too, to the head or to the body. And so we got it down, when you go down, say I hit you in the stomach, bend over. Back of the head, right here at the base of the skull. I don't want to hit to the head here, or you can even put it in the neck or the spine. I can even come here and hit down in the kidney area. And then uh, here I also could, uh, what's on here, right to the head, right to the solar plexus, you know, up to the side, right to the rib. So there's a couple ways that you can do the elbow poke. Now that we're on the elbow poke, let's go to the scimitar block. What we're doing right now, guys, is building up for this technique I'm going to show you. All right, scimitar block, it's nothing really more than an inward block with the other hand coming back prepared. All right, so from here, we're going to step forward with the left foot. You're going to throw a left inward block as the right hand comes back at the same time. Okay, it does seem silly to have your hand way back here, you know, but it actually develops some power into that, and then when you come into your strike with the other hand, it's going to have power. Where does it get the name scimitar from? Do you know what a scimitar pretty much is? A lot of people don't know what this is. They say, uh, I think it's a sword. Yeah, it's a short sword with a shield paired up. So you block here, and you strike with your sword. That's where it got its name from. So from here, throw the punch. See, I blocked this is here. Now throw the punch. See, that here, that when I really got him good. So that didn't show the example very well, did it, on how much more power. That one moved it more. Did yeah. you feel the oh, power yeah. in the other one, yeah. though, too? Yeah, but that one doesn't push me off. <laughs> I just pushed it way strike. out there. More strike. Okay, yeah. now let's, let's see it this way. It's fine. I'm setting up here, too. But if I'm back here, too, look at this. I can go high. I can go low. And setting you up there. Here's another thing you do with it. Throw a punch. This is not in our books, textbook to do this. If you catch the inside there, right, let's go this way for a moment. Inside with this, this comes here, this comes here, you broke that arm. Yeah, it's, it, it'll sting. So you're going to snap. That. Oops, that's capo, guys. Capo is not a safe thing. I mean, it's not like a soft art. So, well, you see a lot of times in the videos of capo, it's slapping out, coming real fast, being flashy with it, which is fine, it's cool, it's fun to see. But here's the core of the capo pretty much is destroy and break. Is what you want to do is survive. And that's what the Kempo came out for. Yeah, we have to soften up Kempo a lot of times because of the deadliness of it. You know, there's other arts that are deadly like that that's, you know, just combative arts. That's what Kempo is, but it's been softened up a lot. Right. But we're going to bring out and do the tightening down here. So we've got the scimitar block, bring it back, turn, elbow slam right to the rib cage is what we're going for at this moment. Throw the punch here, come here to here. Okay, see how he always holds his arm out here? You know, that's not gonna really happen in real life. You're gonna be like punching like this, or punching like this and coming through. The arm's never gonna stay there. I know you guys, 
There's always someone out there who criticizes that they don't understand why we do Just this. Just for the movement. Let me tell you why we do this. Hold it out there. Snap it back. Now the thing is, if we're always trying to snap it back, we're going to have a really hard time making a technique work off the go. You know, when you're trying to learn it. But from here, step out of the way. I want you to do the technique I mean now. And step out, block, and then the elbow. Okay, now do it again. Okay, that still will hurt. But check it out. Do it again, and this time go high to my head. So you still get used to doing the technique. No, I want you to snap the punch at me. I would have been in there. I had to pull it back. But because of the training slow here and letting it happen, that's being an uki. That's what we call it, uki. Is the guy who's the receiver of it. Or we also just call him the dummy. <laughs> It's like my teachers in school called me. He said that. <laughs> You're the dummy, huh? You were, yeah, yeah. you were the dunce cat. Yeah, right, right. But that's it. That's the dummy. It's the uki. The reason why we call them the dummy because, you know, we slap them around like a crash test dummy sometimes. Back in the old days, we were a little more rough. I remember when I was training, my instructor told us, hit harder. Especially when we were going for black belt. With this here, we had to slam that elbow in there a little bit more. So we were trying to go like this. Throw a punch. We go here. He goes, oh, hit harder. We're like, we don't want to. You know, but we did. And that was back in the older days. Yeah. Oh, wow. And we blasted. So, but that is crashing elbow part of it, though. Here's, let's do here, scimitar, elbow, back fist. That's saying once you elbow them, they fold in like this. Now you can reach the back of the knuckles right up in here in your kidney. I had someone... The commenting on one of my videos, throw a punch. I was doing the darkness where I come in here and I would hit right here. They thought I was hitting the spine. No, I was hitting on the side here. And, you know, they just mistook where I said kidney. They go, no, the kidneys are over here. Okay, well, I'm not a medical doctor, but <laughs> I know one thing is this area right here, right underneath the rib cage, right near the back, and here's the spine, go to the side. That's what we're hitting with this. Oops, I hit him in the back. And they <laughs> throw a punch. Boom. Oops, I actually hit him in the spine. Okay, that's fine too. That hurts too. Don't be so technical, guys, that you get lost. Because when you're in a fight, it's never going to be precision. Everything is going to be precision. You know, sometimes you can't. If when it is precise, it's over. Bam, bam. Oops, they're down on the ground. You no, know, every opponent fights different, so like, who knows you what never know. Right. Whether they fight different, you don't know where they are. Right. right. Some will you don't know. Punch. Some will follow through with the punch. Big haymakers. You got to You don't know who that. your opponent is no. on the street. And right. here we know what, how we do, and we get used to it with your partner, but not in the street. You don't. Right. All right. So from here, go ahead, block it in. Elbow. I come forward. He hits me in the back area, and the kidney is the primary target. Oops, you missed. You hit this somewhere else. That's fine. Do something else if it didn't stop him. Okay, the other variation. Throw a punch. As I hit the elbow, he doesn't really bend over like that. He's going to probably move. I mean, I don't know anybody that gets an elbow in the ribs and just stand there like this. He's probably going to move, but maybe he didn't double. Throw a punch. So as I scimitar block, I hit here, he didn't really bend over it. Look, I can't really back fist him too well. So I elbow poke. We were working the elbow poke. Now's the time to do it. So let's do this in the air here. Scimitar block, elbow cross, elbow poke. Let's go to the other variation. We call it A variation, B variation. Here we go. Block, elbow, back fist is the other one, or the elbow poke. So we got that. So here's crash and elbow. The Parker system, I believe, calls it blasting elbow, and they don't just stop there all the time, too. They can come in here and throw with different things. There's different variations of that. But that's where that comes out of is crashing elbow. Yeah. All right, uh, jab and a cross. I don't think we did this yet. But if we did, that's okay, guys. Let's practice it anyhow. I don't think we did either. Okay, so the back fist was off from more to sideways. So we're squared up more like a boxer stance, our feet are a little more forward. We don't have to be like this, but you know, my feet are more forward. My opponent is in right here, he steps over, he's like this. So he's looking right this way. So there's your jab. 
Come up here. Now look, turn the hip. And there's a cross. The cross is a lot like a reverse punch, a return punch, but this time it's coming at a different angle. I'm not coming straight in, I'm taking at an angle. Hence the name cross, right? Makes sense. Lifting that foot up into like a soft bow. Leaning that shoulder in a little bit, give you a little power. Here's your jab and your cross. So here, the jab, then the cross. So you come over here, you fall, fall up here like this. Jab, cross. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna jab. So what, like, this is what I like to do right here. I shift my hip into it. And that sets that right off. I don't just do jab. I, so a lot of times I'll do is I'll dip that shoulder into the jab and here. And then you can lace the punches together. Instead of just being hand punches, you've got some body weight behind this. I like me a jab, I tell you that, guys. Yeah. I use the back fist a lot too, but when it comes down to it, when we're, I'm sparring with someone with loud face contact, yeah. I'm like, all right. Wow, wow. Like when we were doing the MMA, I loved it because in the point fighting training, we didn't really hit to the face because the lower belts weren't allowed to hit to the face. So we stayed in the helmet. But when we went to MMA training, where I was doing it with those guys, and we hit a little harder, so I'd throw a jab. Pow, pow. And one day I hit the jab on one of my guys, and seen, you know, he just kept taking it right to the nose. And then I seen a little trickle of blood, and I'm like, this guy's nose, let's see how much he's going to take. I wasn't just trying to beat him up because he was training to do full contact fighting. And he was ready to get in the cage within like probably about three or four weeks before this. You know, or I mean after this, I mean. So I just kept saying, how much can his nose take? It took a lot. <laughs> Most people would have been done bleeding everywhere yeah, as many times as I peppered that nose. Gotta learn to take but that on. jab is fast. So yeah. from here, from here. So now I put a little bit into it. I can move my body weight. I can't really reach you here, but look at this. Mark. And that's sets what you're that, doing. Sets up that, that distance too. You're tagging the light and then you pivot and you got yep. extra three inches of power. I like how Paul mentioned too, the jab is not meant to be your knockout shot. Everyone thinks every punch is a knockout shot. No, it is not a knockout shot every time. You know, not everyone has that knockout power either, the precision. Right. So quit trying to be a knockout artist and just be precise. You hit a guy enough times, it's gonna slow them down. You hit him good enough, you might not knock him out, it's gonna slow him down. But you never know, you might take him out. But that's the art of fighting. You just got to learn how to do it, train it. So we're at the end of our lesson, or end of the lesson here. So what we're going to do, you know how we've been doing it, guys. We've been putting some kind of quote or something in there. And I wanted you guys to guess. I haven't had anybody guess, but that's not going to stop me. And, you know, Paul, too, adds different things. It's not going to stop us from doing this. So what we're going to do is keep going on with this uh, yeah. quote. Get so, response. do you want to read it? Oh, I shall read it. My eyes are really bad. I gotta get, get close. <laughs> A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. I like that a lot. If you know where that is from, let us know. We know where it's from because we looked it up. <laughs> yeah, well, and we got, you know, we say in reading, I got a board here sitting there. It's like our little cheat board, you know, or teleprompter, but it's not a teleprompter, it's a board. <laughs> yeah. Old fashioned teleprompter. Yeah, yeah. You know how they used to do the card switching? Well, we got one there. But that's what it is. I'm going to read it too because it deserves another reading, don't you think? Okay. A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. Some of you guys are like, well, 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 good name, great wealth. Well, and the funny thing is on my little teleprompter here, I misspelled wealth. I put we. But we wrote, we wrote it correctly. <laughs> I just noticed that now. But anyhow, a good name. You want to have a good name, guys. The problem with this country now is we're losing a good name. Right. We don't know what a good name is. Here's the problem. A lot of the... A lot of people, this is real important, so if you guys are with us, stay tuned. This is really important. 
A lot of people out there, they don't know who they are. They don't know where they come from pretty much. They don't know the history of their family. All they know is their last name, but they don't know where it came from. Right. Your last name may be from slavery, you don't know. Your last name may be an adopted name from somewhere down the line, you don't know. Right. So you might say, hey, I'm Irish. But then you find out that you're really not Irish, it was just an adopted name. So who are you? You know, that's a problem a lot of people are having. So being, even if it is an adopted name, or if it's a slave name, guess what? You carrying that name for how many years in your family? This is what a family should do. A dad, a mom, anybody says, you know what? I would go to my kids, you're, you're a Grimes. Do you ever tell your kids, you're a Kessler? No, but I tell my kids they're only as good as their word because that's their character, and if your word's no good, then people will never trust you, or that's what I teach my children. No, it's it's teach them right. value. Yeah. You have a value. What is your name? You know, a name is just a name, but the thing is, a name is not for us. It's for others to relate to us. So what name are you going by? Make it a good one. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Let's go to the subscribe. What do you think? Yeah. Should they do it? Subscribe, pass the word along, get involved. And yes, we are getting closer and closer to 300 videos. Our next goal is 9,000 subscribers. With you guys supporting us on this, we, we appreciate passed 8,000. Yeah, we thank you very much for that too. Yes, definitely thank you. So we passed 8,000 we're getting closer and closer to 9,000. So subscribe. If you haven't done so yet, do so. Send some positive comments and let us know you're out there. And God bless you. Thank you.